and His Word. And I want to share it with you this Sunday morning with the help of Him. In Revelation chapter 3, very familiar text that I'll share with you this morning, beginning with verse 14. John is writing to the angels of the church here of Sardis that we won't read. Philadelphia we won't read, but there is one that I want to read. And it's called the church of Laodicea. In verse 14 of chapter 3 of the book of Revelation, if you dare say amen with me. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor, blind and naked. I counsel thee, and these are the words of Christ now, understand that the words in red. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich in white raiment. And thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Jesus said, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him, and I will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. Verse 22, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Would you bow your head and pray with us and pray for us this Sunday morning that God would use us as he sees fit. I love you this morning, my Lord. I thank you, Lord Jesus, with all my heart this morning, Lord, with all my mind, with all my soul, Lord, and with all my strength. I magnify your name, Lord. I exalt you this Sunday morning. Lord, because I realize today, Lord, I'm nothing without you. And apart from you, Lord, I can do nothing this morning. But, Lord, I am in dire need of you, Lord. I need your guidance. I need your direction. I need that divine unction from on high, that anointing that makes preaching easy. I come to you, Lord, humble, broken. I come to you, Lord, yielded to you. Hallelujah. God as a yielded vessel, desiring, Lord, that your spirit and your word would flow through me this Sunday morning. To reach the hearts and the lives of each and every individual that sitteth under the sound of our voice. I pray, Lord, for the backslider. I pray for that one that's lukewarm. I pray for that sinner man or woman that's sitting here. That the convicting power of your spirit would settle in now upon each and every one of them. That they will not be able to resist the anointing and the spirit and the power of the Holy Ghost of God. My Lord God, we feel your presence. We yield ourselves to you now, Lord. And everything that will be said and done and accomplished in this service today, Lord, I'll be careful to give you the thanks to give you the praise, and to give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. You may be seated this morning. If I had a subject to preach on this morning, it would be giving God our all. Giving God our Oh, here in the book of Revelation, John writing to the seven churches of Asia Minor. He 
He wrote to all of these churches, and each one the Lord had something against, except for the church of Philadelphia. The church that was pleasing unto him. And I don't want to dwell on none of those this morning. I just want to preach to you on the church of the Laodiceans. If I could give you some history about this particular city. The city was founded about 250 B.C. by Antiochus II. Who named it after his wife Laodicea. And populated it with the Syrians and the Jews whom he had transported or transplanted from Babylonia. It was situated on almost a square plateau, a hundred feet above the valley, and was surrounded by extensive, listen, fertile fields and good grazing grounds. The place soon became famous for its beauty and its wealth, derived largely from sheep whose glossy black wool was woven into garments and carpet. The city was also a center for banking and other financial operations conducted for the most part by the prominent and wealthy Jewish circle. In the last part of the first century when the book of Revelation was written, the Laodicean church was apparently taken with the atmosphere of affluence so prominent in its place and was reproved because it was rich in material things, but lukewarm in the things of the Spirit. In Christ's counsel for it, to buy from Him gold refined in the fire, white garments and salve to put on their eyes. Sir William Ramsey saw references to Laodicea's wealth, its famous garments, and perhaps a the Pergian powder for diseases of the eyes, which possibly was compounded here. Under the, under the wars and different things of the Turks, the city declined and was abandoned soon after the 13th century. The church of Laodicea was famous for its wealth, for its prestige, for its beauty, it was prominent. People knew it all over the world. The place called Laodicea. But Jesus' writings declared, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness. The beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, Jesus declared, and that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. I am persuaded to believe that the Spirit of the Lord began to deal with my heart this week about the Spirit that has crept into our churches. It is a Spirit of lukewarmness. A spirit of lackadaisical, if you will. A spirit of self-satisfied. I don't need no more of God. I'm okay where I'm at. That young man that called me several days this week and the second day I finally returned his call, I was out the first day and I called him up and he said, Preacher, are you available? I said, Yes, sir, I am. He said, I'm tired and I want to change. And he came to the church and he began to share with me. My life is in a mess. I've done things that I'm ashamed of. Everybody knows me, but he declared that I want to change. I'm tired of living the way that I'm living. As a dead end road, it's a place of nowhere. And I've reached that end, preacher. And I said, that's a good thing. Because God has got you at a point now in your life. 
that you're willing to change. You're ready to submit to His will and to His way. But you have to give God your all. I'm persuaded to believe today that we as a body of Christ is coming short in giving God our all. The Spirit of lackadaisical is here in our churches today that says I'm okay. I, I, I just want to take my time and preach to you this morning. And I told him I'd try to be through by 11.30 and Sister Shirley said, no, you'll be done when God says get done. I said, okay. So I just want to preach to you this morning that spirit of I'm okay, of, of self-satisfied, self-satisfaction. That's where the church of Laodicea was. It became a prominent place. It became a wealthy place. It became a place of prestige. But it also became a place where they forgot about God. Is that where we're at today, church? Has God blessed us to the point? Y'all pray for me this morning. Has God blessed us to the point that we don't need Him anymore? Have we become that lackadaisical church of the 21st century? Have we become that self-satisfied people? Have we become a people that don't need God anymore? Be careful before you answer that question. He says here in His Word, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. Hmm? Isn't it amazing that the Lord knows everything about us. I'm just going to take my time and preach to you a little while this morning. Isn't it amazing that no matter where we are, no matter where we go, what we do in life, the Lord still knows who we are. You can't hide it. You can't do away with it. You can't outrun it. It will always be there and the Lord knows who we are, Brother Jeffrey. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad He knows me this morning. He knows my faults. He knows my failures. He knows my shortcomings. He knows my ups. He knows my downs. He knows when I'm in and when I'm out. He knows when I'm doing good. He knows when I'm not doing good. He knows when I'm angry. He knows when I'm not angry. He knows when I'm rejoicing. When I'm not, He just knows it all. So here in Revelation chapter 3, he says, I know your works, Laodicea. See, sometimes we get so blessed with stuff that we feel like we're okay. The church of Laodicea, he said, I know your works. But he said, you're neither cold nor Hot. Lukewarm is a bad place to be. I watched that movie War Room, you know, the other week. And the elder lady asked the younger woman, said, Do you love Jesus? Are you serving the Lord? And she hum hauled around and said, Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you like a cup of coffee? Sure. She fixes two cups of coffee. Sits down to drink it and the woman says, Ugh! This is lukewarm. <laughs> and the elder saint of God said, But mine's hot. <laughs> well, why did you give me that lukewarm cup of coffee? Well, that's the kind of testimony you gave me. Come on, somebody ought to help me preach. 
You're neither here nor you're there. You're somewhere in between. There's a lot of Christian folks that I talk to today that are neither here nor there. They're somewhere in between. My Bible tells me that there is a heaven and there is a hell. There is no in betweens. Yes, you can take an Oreo cookie and untwist it and eat the center if you like. But as a child of God, you don't take God and untwist him and eat the parts you like. Could God preach, Brother John? Woo! My, 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 my. You can't untwist God and the Holy Ghost and eat what you want out of it. He said, take the whole book and digest it all. You gotta have it all. You can't have a little bit of God on Sunday and none of God on Monday. You either in or you're out. You're going up or you're going down. You're either saved or you're not saved. You're either a child of God or you're not a child of God. Where are you this Sunday morning. Where are you this Sunday morning? Do you love Jesus or do you not love Jesus? I'm not a very educated person, but it doesn't take much education to figure that out. Huh? Somebody told me that, I think it was Brother Kim told me that they said, you know what now, preacher? I said, what? He said two and two is no longer four in school. I said, what? He said two and two is five. I said, you've lost me. Because if my fingers are correct, I never learned my multiplication tables, but I was good with my fingers. So you got three joints on each one. Three times five is 15, right? Okay. And two of these and two of these makes four. Now, I'm sure there's probably some kind of reasoning for this stuff, but I'm not going back to school, so I don't plan to learn it. No, how? I've had all the schooling I want. Amen. Amen, Sister Shirley. Yeah. Only learn I'm going to get now is from this book. Huh? You see, I understand this morning, children of God, According to the writings of the Word of God, there is no other way. There's only one way, Brother Small, and His name is Jesus. He's the Christ. He's the Son of God. He is Mary's baby. He's the Holy One of Israel. He's Alpha. He's Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the everlasting Father. He's the Rose of Sharon. He's the Lily in my valley. He's my bride in the morning star, and His name is Jesus, and there is no other way. Peter declared it for any other come preaching any other gospel than that which I have preached unto you. He said, Believe it not. There's a lot of folks out there today and a lot of preachers with a new doctrine. I believe it just came back to my mind. I don't have a note to first this morning. Just bear with me. It came back to my mind. Me and Brother Anthony was talking the other night on the ball field and he said, Preacher, have we got it that wrong? I said, what are you talking about, son? Have we really got it that wrong, preacher? I said, what do you mean? He said, preachers that I've always listened to had faith in is changing their doctrines. That there's really nothing wrong anymore. Are y'all still with me? Huh? That everything's okay now. You can do whatever you want. And it's under the blood of Jesus Christ. He said, if we really got that wrong preacher that we're that far off base, I said, no, sir. He said, I know we're not. He said, but I just thought I'd ask you. We're living in a society in the 21st century church that so many preachers, they have given in. I'm taking my time this morning. To the whims of this world. 
to please society, to be accepted by the majority. Come on, somebody ought to help me preach this morning. Amen. So they can have the applause of men. But I ask you a question this morning. Would you rather have the applause of men or would you rather have the applause of God Almighty in your heart and in your life? Would you rather have, listen, the Bible said to be a friend of this world is to be an enemy of God. Am I in the book this morning? Am I preaching you the word? Somebody ought to help me this morning. I come by to tell you there's only one way and his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus, the son of the living God. He said to the church of Laodicea, you're in a middle spot. You're in a place that nobody wants to be. Don't want to be too mean this morning, but a lot of God's people today are neither here nor there. They're somewhere in between. That's why when you see them, sometimes they're up and sometimes they're down. Sometimes they talk about Jesus. Sometimes they talk about stuff that ain't of Jesus. Because they're unstable. In all their ways. They're like a tumbleweed. They're here and they're there. They just roll with the punches. But Jesus declared that we need to be somewhere where we can be stabilized. Where we can be rooted and grounded in the truth of His Word. Come by to tell you this Sunday morning, it's time, it's time for children of God to rise up to the occasion and get settled down and get rooted and grounded in this book and know what the Word of God says. Because Paul said, even now are there many antichrists in the world. It's not to come. It's already here. And they're out to deceive the very elect of God they're out to deceive you and they're out to deceive me they're out to get us off on a wrong path and go down the wrong road but I've come by to tell the devil he's a little bit too late because I've been planted on the rock of my salvation I'm standing on the rock of Jesus does anybody know what I'm telling you Jesus Christ is the rock of my salvation and that rock will never roll that rock will never move it's the same yesterday today and forever he said I never change he's always the same you can stand on the rock of Jesus Christ I'm trying to get this message across people are here and they're there they're up and down they're in and out and that's why I told the young man the other day to sit here in the fellowship hall with me crying I said you got to give God, you're all. Too many of us today just want to give Him part of us. We want to serve Him when we're in trouble. Hello? We want to serve Him when the chips are down, so to speak. We want to serve Him when we can't find nobody else that will help us. Can I preach this morning? This is burning in my spirit. Sister Small, pray for us. We want to serve Him only when it is convenient. Any other time when the kids are doing good, finances is all right, marriages seem to get along pretty good. Amen. And everything's up on the level. We don't need God. We just put Him in the background. Hallelujah. When everything's good. Can I go here just a minute? When everything is fine, we lay out a church. We don't need church. We don't need Wednesday night Bible study. We don't need Sunday night meetings anymore because everything is fine. But when everything goes wrong, when the rubber meets the road and all hell rises up against you and your family, the first thing I get is a telephone call. 
It doesn't matter whether it's Monday morning or whether it's Tuesday morning or whether it's Wednesday night, midnight. It doesn't matter because you need God and you need somebody to pray for you. You need somebody to call on. Somebody that will talk to you. Somebody that will share with you. But Jesus is not a toy that you can toy with. You can play with him. He's not a yo-yo that you can throw up and down and use it whenever you get ready and throw it back in the closet when you're done with him. My, 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 he's not your toy. I used to have a yo-yo that I loved to play with. And I could throw that thing down and make it stay there and just spin. We call it walking the dog. Yeah. Uh-huh. I could bring it up, put it in two hands, and let it sit there and do that. We call that the rocking chair. Several other things. Just make it do whatever I wanted it to do. But I didn't control that yo-yo. Because sometimes it had a mind of its own. We don't control God. God has his own mind, his own way. We are his children. He is the master. He is the potter. And you and I are the clay. And it is he that molds us. It is he that shapes us. It is he that conforms us into his image and his likeness. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds that you might be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Can I ask you a question this morning? How much of God are you giving Him today? How much of God are you giving to Him today? Are we giving God our all or are we just giving Him little bits and pieces? Husbands and wives, how much of God are you giving for your marriage? When your marriage is in trouble, do you give it completely to God and say, here it is, God, you take it? Huh? I don't know why this is just coming back to mind, but you know, the war room was about a marriage couple. <laughs> the man was doing things he ought not have been doing and all this kind of stuff, you know, and, and all that business, amen. But that elderly woman got a hold of that lukewarm woman. And she started coming to her house daily. And they had a prayer time and she had a prayer room. I told somebody just last night or either, maybe it was this morning, I'm not sure. We talk, I talk so much, I guess. Amen. But I said, prayer still changes things. Prayer will still make a difference, my brothers and my sisters, this Sunday morning. You see, let me get back to the church of Laodicea here. Yeah, yeah, this woman, you know, she kept coming over, amen. And God finally got a hold of her, and she realized she was not in control. I said she was not in control. She couldn't change her husband. She couldn't make him live right. I got news for somebody in here this Sunday morning. You can't make your wife live right. You can't make your children live right. You can't make your husband live right. But I tell you who can. His name is Jesus. If you'll find you a war room and crawl up in it and get down on your knees and cry out to God Almighty, God will enter into that situation. God will enter into your marriage. God will enter into your children and God will change your situation. Do I have anybody that's ever found that to be true? Stand up and give God the praise. Stand up and give him the praise. make a difference in your life when you give God your all. Hmm? When you give 
God, you're all. Good to see that young man that got saved this week. Brother Mills, Brother Mills, wave your hand back there just a little taste, son. <laughs> Woo! To God be the glory. The devil has lost another victim, and God has won another victory. Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. Yes. God is in the soul saving business. He said, But I know you. I've come out to tell somebody something today. You can't hide what you're doing. You can't cover it up. Huh? You can't do like folks do when they find out the preacher's coming and they lift up the rug and sweep the dirt on it and say, I'll get it later. Huh? You can't do like cats when they find them a sweet spot and they dig out the straw and they do their business and cover it up. And then you come along and step in it. Huh? I'm going somewhere with this one, baby. Woo! Hallelujah. Because you see, you do your own thing and you try to cover it up and you lie about this and you lie about that. You're neither here nor you're there. You're somewhere in between. And you tell so many lies that after a while you step in your own business. You step in your own mess. And you say, my God, who did it? You can point your finger at yourself because you put yourself in that situation. It is of the Lord we blame Jesus for everything. Bless his heart. The children don't live right. It's Jesus' fault. If I can't pay much, it's Jesus' fault. He said if I'd serve him, he'd take care of all this. Are you serving him for the things that he can give you? Hello? I had that conversation this week. Are you serving him just because of the things he can give you? Jesus said to his disciples one time, he said, Rejoice not that the devils of hell are subject unto you, but rejoice rather that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Huh? We don't serve him for what he can give to us. He's done and give us everything. I got to go. He's given us everything, church. When he died at Calvary on that rugged cross, hallelujah, when they pierced his side and planted a crown of thorns upon his head. And from 9 o'clock that morning to 3 that afternoon, when the sun refused to shine and he dropped his head and said it is finished and gave up the ghost, locked his head between his shoulders. It's a done deal. It's over with. When he done that, it was enough. If he never does another thing for you, if he never does another thing for me, preach, Brother John, preach. If he never gives us another another blessing he gave us enough when he gave us the cross when he gave his life as a ransom for yours and for mine he gave everything everything he gave it all that we could be where we're at today but the question still looms in my mind are we giving God our all Still with the church of Laodicea. There's so much I want to preach this morning. He said, you're neither cold nor you're hot. But you're lukewarm and you're in the middle somewhere. Can I stop and ask one question? Where are you this Sunday morning? Because I'm persuaded to believe and under the presumption that the next thing that's going to happen major is the coming of the Messiah. If I'm wrong, God, reprove me. Rebuke me, Lord. But if I know anything about this whole Bible, I'm persuaded to believe, Pastor Small, that the next great event, Klasmakitic plasma, event, will be the coming of the Messiah. Huh? Because we're in a place now, the United States is neither cold nor hot.
You ever come in from being so hot and thirsty and, and, and somebody hands you a lukewarm glass of water? You're sitting there in a switch just like it is on me right now, just popping off of you, and you're so hot. And he's like, are you crazy? Why'd you give me that? Huh? I want to go to the fridge and get a cold glass of water. And sometimes it's so good, I want to go back and get a second. Help me, Holy Ghost. <laughs> I want to go back and get a second helping. Sister Javon, because that first was so good. It just refreshed me and revived me. I came in Thursday from cutting in the grass, you know, and I drank me some good old water. My wife said, you need to go get your shower. You're nasty and dirty. I said, okay. Do not get in cold water, she says. I said, Okay. And I get in that warm water and it feels good. And I wash and then I cool off. And then before I get out, I turn her on down to cold. Some of you may not like cold, but I like it. If you don't like cold, you better not go in that water today. And I turn it down and there's something about that that just cools me on down. And I got to singing in the shower Thursday. Ain't that a lesson? Huh? Yeah, I left it unplugged so the water could run out. Yeah. And I'm singing in the shower and God's just blessing and I feel good. Hallelujah. I was tired just a few minutes ago, but I'm telling you this Sunday morning, that's the way the spirit of the living God is. Hallelujah. When you're, when you're, when you're where you need to be with God. Hallelujah. Because he wants you hot this Sunday morning. He don't want you cold. I know I was talking about a cold shower, but that re I'm talking about the refreshing of that cold water. It's like the spirit of the living God. It is refreshing. It is renewing. It is satisfying. It makes my day. Does anybody know what I'm preaching to you about? The church of Laodicea needed God to come in and refresh them and renew them and revive them. But instead, they decided to stay where they were. As hard as I preach to you guys, some of you decided already to stay where you are. You're saved. And satisfied. Desire no more of the freshness and newness of his spirit. Desire no more to be closer to God than where you are today. I believe we have produced in the 21st century a Laodicean church. You may not agree, and that's okay. But I believe we have produced for the most part a Laodicean church. Because we have become self-satisfied, self-sustaining. God has blessed us just like he blessed the Laodicean church. And many times, can I say this with all the love that I can, church? Many times we take the very things that God has blessed us with and use them for a curse against God. Huh? God's blessed you with some material stuff. Thank God for it. Huh? But it's sad when you ride that four wheeler to 2 a.m. in the morning and you can't get up for church on Sunday mornings. Yeah. Yeah, come on, somebody ought to help me. I'm right on target. I'm not lost. I know where I'm at this morning. Amen. I got an HD sitting over there in the building. Somebody said that stands for $100. You call it what you want. It's a Harley Davidson. And I love the ride. I love the sound of it. But you won't catch me riding on Saturday nights. You won't catch me riding on Sunday evenings. Because I'm getting ready to worship my God. I'm ready to. I know this ain't going over too well. Huh? 
I know some of you are dissatisfied with the message and the sermon this morning, but I'm talking about giving God our all. You're not giving God your all when you're putting everything ahead of God uh, and you're putting everything first uh, beside my God. I might as well preach it. Uh, and you're putting everything else first but Jesus Christ in your heart and in your life. I love Jesus, preacher. Prove it. Put your money where your mouth is. Prove it by your actions. Let your actions, I always said action speaks louder than words. Let your actions speak for you. You really love Jesus, the preacher ain't got to look for you on Sundays. You really love Jesus? Preacher ain't got to worry about where you're at on Wednesday night because you're going to be here for Bible study. Oh, I'm upset in the apple cart. <laughs> huh? Some don't like this preacher. Well, they didn't like Jesus neither. <laughs> I'm trying to help us. I, I haven't laid in my closet physically, spiritually. This I'm talking about closet. I didn't go to my office. I laid in the closet, buried my head between the clothes this week. I stayed on my knees before God with my Bible in front of me and praying, God, I need you. This church needs you. The 21st century needs you. And God, we are in trouble because we've got a lay out of sin spirit that has developed among the children of the living God. Laodicean church that was blessed came to a point that now I'm okay. What are we going to do the day we stand before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Huh? And we say, but Lord, I cast out devils in your name. Ah, oh, boy, the words just feed my spirit this morning. I prayed in your name. I cast out devils in your name. But he looks at them and says, Depart from me, ye worker of iniquity, for I never knew you. What are you telling me, Pastor John? It's going to be a sad day, my friend. When you stand before the judge of all the earth, not me, I'm not your judge this morning. I'm just a little shepherd boy this morning. I'm just a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm just a mouthpiece for the master. That's all I am. I'm just a voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare you the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm just a little fellow this morning, this morning. But I'm telling you, you're going to stand before him one day. And I ask you, what will he say in your presence? What will he say when he looked at the church of Laodicea and said, I gave you space to repent and you repented not. How many times I give an altar call and it's empty. And we're sitting in our seats and we're so far away from God. But yet we refuse to come to an altar of prayer and say, Lord, I need Where are we at today, church? Where are we? In our relationship to Him. Where are we today? The church of Laodicea, he said, listen, I know where you're at. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Huh? I love each and every one of you this morning. But, but I, I don't know how we make it off of two dollars worth of God through the week. I really don't. I struggle. It takes me getting in my prayer closet. I don't know about you guys. It takes me pushing my plate to the side. And saying, Lord, I need to fast because I really got things going on in my life where I need you, Lord. 
Like I've told some of these recently, you've got an addiction that cannot be broken unless you give your all to God and surrender everything to God. And when you walk out of this room, the devil's going to jump on your tooth and nail and say you didn't get nothing. But it's like I told Brother Mills, I want you to stand toe to toe and eye to eye and tell the devil, you a liar, go back to hell from which you came from. I'm a child of God. I've been born again and I've been washed in the blood of Jesus and I'm on my way to heaven glory somebody praise him in the house somebody give him honor and glory it's not a fairy tale I'm preaching to you this morning I'm not trying to scare you I'm preaching the word of God to you but this spirit is creeping to the church it's a lackadaisical spirit I'm okay. Can I tell you without trying to scare you this morning that times are going to get worse? Your finances are going to get worse? But my God, preacher, I come to be encouraged. Yeah, I still got a good word of encouragement for you now. Hang in there. Because you see, when everything gets worse, you begin to give God more and more and more. Pastor Small, I've learned, two th- I've learned a few things in life as a minister. When bad times come, you'll do one or two things. You'll give God more and more of your life or you'll get further and further away from God. I've learned those two things in life. Huh? And if you don't want what he's offering, then I can't help you. Huh? If you choose to stay in the condition you're in and refuse to repent, then I cannot help you. I'm here for your services, but if you don't want me, I can't help you. God has sent me here 19 years ago as your pastor to love you, to help you, and for us to learn together His Word. But I'm your shepherd this morning. And if you refuse to let me help you, then I can't help you. When you say to me, I've got all I need... But I've never said that to you, preacher. No, but your actions prove it to me. Hello, hello, hello. Your actions prove it to me when you can miss week after week after week after church and come in after three Sundays of being gone and shout and holler louder than anybody else. And I'm thinking, boy, I could have had a V8. I've missed something. Because I've struggled. To pray this week. I've struggled to rejoice come Sunday morning because the devil has fought me tooth and nail all week long. And people come in here shouting when they've had none of God all week. I've missed the boat. I say to you, Brother Anthony, what you said to me, are we that far off? If that's the case, let's quit Wednesday night Bible study. Let's quit Sunday night and just have church Sunday morning. I don't mind going home on Sunday afternoon and getting in my recliner and not have to worry about coming to church. Feel pretty good. But then about 6 o'clock I feel bad. Because I know where I'm supposed to be. Come on, y'all with me? I'm still on the lay out of seeing church. I'm not lost. I know where I'm at. I'm doing like Jesus said, I counsel thee this Sunday morning to buy me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment and that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. What is it, preacher, this morning? This is the eye salve that you need. This will give you the white raiment. I said this will give you the white raiment that you need if you get in the book and begin to study the word of God. Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Are you going to give God your all this morning? Deuteronomy 6 and 5, I'll read you a couple of scriptures. He said that thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thine soul, and with all thy might. 
Psalmist David picked it up in Psalm 119 and verse 2. said, blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him. Listen, that seek him with the whole heart. Proverbs 3 and 5 said, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. Jeremiah 29 and 13, it says, You shall seek me and find me. When? When you shall search for me with all your heart. Somebody say all. all. Spell it. Got an educated group of people in here. Still don't know that two and two is four. Joel 2 and 12 said, Therefore also now saith the Lord, Turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and weeping and mourning. And on and on the scriptures go telling us to give God all our heart. I told somebody just this week, I said, You know something? I said, When a person is truly devoted to God, You don't even have to visit that person. You ain't got to call them. Because every time you turn around, they're in your face. They're like a gnat. Amen, Brother Jeffrey? Y'all don't know the times that Brother Jody's trying to work and this man's just worrying the devil out of him. I know this to be a fact. That's why I'm just picking on these boys. He said the other day, I, I, I was going to call you, preacher. I said, go ahead. I know your number now. You can call me. Huh? But, but he said, you know why, preacher, I do this? He said, because I want to learn. I want to know more about the Lord and I know I can call Brother Jody and talk to him and know he'll tell me what the word said whether I like it or not and I'm just using these two for an example this morning because I know what's been going on with him and he calls me up wanting to know things about the word of God I can't tell him who won the latest ball game I don't know who won the latest stock car race I don't know nothing about golf I don't know nothing about Serena and Bahina whoever those played tennis or whatever they do I just don't know nothing about that stuff I do know a little bit about Rocky. I watched him this weekend again. I watched one and two last night. Three was coming on. I said, I got to go. My wife's in the kitchen making nanny pudding, and I'm watching Rocky. She likes the Westburns. Gosh, knows. She's in the group with Brother Small. <laughs> Amen. What are you telling me, preacher? And as much as I love that, nine o'clock came when the second one went off. Where did I go? Spend time in my prayer closet with God. I like Rocky, but I don't love Rocky. I like softball, but I don't love softball. Y'all ain't going to help me. Huh? What are you telling me, preacher? I like those things, but I love Jesus Christ. I love the Lord with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my soul, and with all my strength. That's the first and greatest commandment, is it not? What are you telling me, Pastor? I'm asking you again the question this Sunday morning, and and i got to close out, I know. But I'm asking you the question this morning. Are you giving God all your heart? Are you? Are you just playing around the perimeter a little bit? They told me if you want to catch the big fish, preacher, you've got to go out in the boat. 
I said, I'm happy with the minors. The what? Stump bumpers. Never heard that one. Huh? Oh, that means little. Okay. All right. I got you. Uh, <laughs> I first said, if you got a grease smell, it eat him. Amen. And, and I'm talking about the natural now. I, I'm just not going out yonder. I'm sorry. Amen. If I got to come home with the little one, it's okay with me. I've been lifting weights about all my life, and I'm still little. It's okay. That's what Brother Mark told me this morning. I thought I was doing pretty good. Huh? What are you telling me? If you want to get with the Lord where you need to be. I talked about just staying around the perimeter and stump bumpers. That's where a lot of Christian folks are. Hello? You're just a bunch of stump bumpers. Huh? You went from a tadpole to a mentor, but you never went any farther. Because you're satisfied, self-satisfied, laying there on the bank around the perimeter and never getting more of God. If you want to grow with God, you got to go. Amen. My philosophy is no pain, no gain. If you want to grow, you got to go. That's my philosophy in the gym. You want to get deeper with God? Get in the Word. Come to church. Stay on your knees. Seek the Lord with all of your heart. I'm going to close this sermon out and tell you this morning that God don't want partial of you. Huh? He don't want a piece of your heart. There are times I get a piece of the pie. People make one, like Sister Small, she'll bring me a piece. And Brother Small gets the rest. I just get a piece. And that'll work for that stuff. But it won't work when you're serving God. I'm closing this morning. You got to give him everything, church. You got to give him everything. Listen to me, somebody here this morning. You got to give him your finances. You got to give him your marriage. You got to give him your soul. You got to give him every fiber of your being. You got to give him your children. Huh? You got to give him everything. Because we never know the moment nor the second that we're going to be called out into eternity. I was over in Whiteville this, this week. I believe it might have been Thursday when I stopped by to see Brother Mark or sometime. Might have been. I'm not sure. Friday maybe. There's three tents there at that funeral place. Two of them had the, um, not the casket. What's the other thing? The steel vault sitting on top. Two of them. The other one had just been buried. And I thought, my God, people are leaving this world. But yet we feel like we've got so much time. Where do we get that from, folks? It's one that's appointed unto man to die. And after death will come the judgment. Huh? We are going to die. I haven't finished the sermon, but i gotta got to close out here. Can I ask you the question, where will you go from here? I preached a sermon many, many years ago on that simple subject, where will you go from here? I ask you today, when you leave this church, where will you go from here? What if eternity calls your number? Where will you go from here? If he lets you live another 20 years, where will you go from here? And from my point of view, I don't see another 20 years. 
I don't hardly see another 10 years or five years. That's just me. Hmm? Because I've seen the change in the last five years. And how we've done a 360 turn. And it's all lining up with this book. I had time I'd preach to you about it this morning. Huh? The Laodicea in church. The great town of all of its wealth and beauty. I read to you in the 13th century now lays in ruins. And there's a new one built there now. But the old one's deceased. They had it all at one time. The rich man had it all at one time. <laughs> and the poor man had nothing. But he'd give his heart to somebody. That took care of him. Yes, yeah, she ate the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. But one day the roles were reversed. A 360 had taken place. And now the rich man lifted his eyes in hell being in torment. And the poor man is resting in ease. You may have it made right now and you don't need God. You may be like the Laodicea in church. But there'll come a day in your life where you will, the roles will be reversed and you will cry out and say, God, I need you. But I ask you, are you going to wait and wait and wait? Or would you come to him now? Come, sister. While the blood is running warm in your veins. I'm not talking just to center people. I'm talking to Christian folks that have not given God your all. I watch you in here week in and week out. And sometimes I never see you come to the altar. And I wonder, God, what's going on in their life? What's happening in them? I know you don't have to come here. But I believe there's times we need to come here. Huh? I used to sing a song so many years ago that said there's dust on the altar where we used to pray. There's dust on it now. Our altars in the 21st century has become barren and dry because we've adopted the Spirit of the Laodicean church. And we are rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. But he said, Knowest thou not that thou art wretched and poor, miserable, naked? What does all that have to do with this preacher? It lets me know where it goes back to the first verse that I read to you. Jesus said, And I know your works. He sees you right where you are this morning. You're not hiding anything. You're not covering up anything. Listen to me, children. Listen to me, young people. Listen to me, mom and daddies. There's nothing here that shall not be revealed. Rich man had it made until death called his name. And he lost out. And he went to hell. As some of you in here this morning, if you don't change your ways, you're going to be lost. And that's not my prayer for you. My prayer is that you would make it to heaven this morning. That you would make it. With every head bowed and every eye closed. I want to speak to you out of my heart this morning. And I want to ask you the question. Have you given God all your heart? Have you surrendered you're all. The songwriter said, I surrender all. All to Jesus. I surrender all to Him. I freely give. What about it this morning? Is there one?
that would just raise your hand and say, Preacher, remember me in prayer. God bless. God bless. God bless. There's so many hands going up, I can't count them. How many of you that raised your hand and others that say this morning, Preacher, I want to make a change? Raise your hands. God bless these. I'm going to ask one more question. If you would be man or woman enough just to come down here and kneel with me. I'm going to kneel with you at this altar. Come on. God gave me this message for a purpose. And I know we got other stuff, but I'm not going to rush the move of God. People are coming. Come on. Come on. I need some of my prayer warriors to pray for these that are coming around the altar this Sunday morning. Some of you men and women that will just hold back and pray for these, if you would. Just pray for these. Just lay your hand on them and pray. You don't have to holler and scream at them. Just pray for them and love them. Just pray for them and love them this morning. Oh, glory, glory, glory. What about it this morning? What about it? What about it this morning? There's some others sitting back. Come on this morning. Come on. Come on this morning. Come on this morning. Come on. Come on. Come on this morning. Pray ye one for another. Pray ye one for another. That's right. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Pray ye one for another. God, help us to give you our all. Help us to give you our all. Love you this morning, Lord. I love you this morning. Love you this morning, Lord. I love you, Lord. Love you, Lord. Love you, Lord. Love you, Lord. Lord, I give you my all. I give you my all. I surrender all to you, Lord. I lay it all on the altar this morning. Lord, I give it all to you, Lord. I give you my all, Lord. Take me, Lord, with all my faults and with all my failures, Lord. Take me, Lord, just as I am this morning. Mold me, Lord. Shape me, Lord. Help me to be what you want me to be, Lord, and not what I want. Change my will. Change my way. Change my desires, Lord. Change my heart. Take all of me this Sunday morning, Lord. Take all of me this morning, Lord. Take all of me. I pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We love you this morning, Lord. Who can know the heart? It is I, the Lord thy God, that knoweth the heart of man. He knows our hearts this morning, church. He knows all of our ways. He's acquainted with them this morning. 
He knows our very thoughts. He knows the very desires of our heart. He knows our all in all. Amen. Would you give God a hand of praise this morning? Would you give God a hand of praise? Come on, let's praise Him. 